So I've attempted to at least get near the situation of his suicide, which for me was absolutely incomprehensible and probably something I refused to accept for quite some time because I hadn't made any contact with him and I felt probably very guilty that I hadn't made any physical contact. I've lost that guilt now because I don't really believe that anything would have prevented this suicide. Um, I'm not naive to believe that one man can really save somebody who's in such a state of absolute depression that it can really be done. Everybody does have, in the end, control over their own lives and over their own destinies. But it, it, it has bothered me an awful lot. The song is not biographical by any stretch of the imagination. It's my impressions of what I believe I felt about Terry and in conjunction ha of how I felt about myself metaphysically jumping into things. So it was really a combination of both of us. There is a philosopher that his name, I wish I could remember, who said that one creates the doppelganger so that you can inflict one's own fears and guilts and passions and the darker sides of one's personality onto that doppelganger and then you kill him and hope by doing that you no longer retain those weaknesses and faults yourself. I feel that's probably played uh, not a small part in, in my life. The idea of the doppelganger as being somebody that I can affix my own fears and paranoias on. Artists are really messed up, you know. <laughs> Over the years, it seems that I've mythologized my stepbrother far more than and uh, more actively than he actually took part in my life. I know that one, he did guide me towards reading a lot more than I read and, and uh, steered me to areas that I wouldn't probably have found on my own, things like Jack Kerouac and beat authors. And I know he had an interest in jazz, but I've subsequently read that I've said that he took me to jazz clubs, which is not entirely true. I would love to him to have taken me to jazz clubs but I just used to take myself to jazz clubs I did in fact take him to a cream concert that Brummel caught which would have been I guess 1967 something like that and uh, I was very disturbed uh, because the music was affecting him adversely because he was um, his particular illness was somewhere between schizophrenia and manic depressiveness and it, I know that he was getting to a pretty tranced out state watching cream because i don't think he'd ever been to anything as loud as that in his life and uh i remember having to take him home because it was it was uh, really affecting him <laughs>